So I'm here at Waterkeep in Barcelona. Um, so Daniel, Daniel Moss, or could you could you hold it with your badge just for a second? Oh, surely. Great, thank you. Just so I've got that. You're here at the Guapa Congress in Barcelona. Um, why? Well, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm from the United States, and I work with a small non-governmental organization called Our Water Commons. And I've recently come off a very interesting experience of working with the New York City Water Authority and some Latin American water utilities. In an exchange relationship, I wouldn't characterize it as an ongoing relationship like some of the guaps here, but it's a very interesting b beginning of a relationship. And what the area of common interest was is that New York City has a very iconic, very well-known case of guaranteeing its water supply, the quality of its water supply and the quantity through working with upstream communities about 100 miles north of New York City. Now there's a lot of other water utilities that are asking themselves the question, how do we achieve water security? How do we achieve water purity? What kind of measures do we need to take outside of our urban areas in cooperation with other public institutions, with landowners, with a whole set of actors upstream that can help preserve the integrity of the city water, but at the same time lifting up the rural areas, providing something back to them so that they can have sustainable livelihoods, whether it be in agriculture or forestry, what have you. So we have this great opportunity to learn together about this whole issue about upstream investments. So I'm very excited to be here at Guapa to learn about this whole mechanism of cooperation. My own particular interest is this issue around upstream investments, which I think is a, a challenging issue, a challenging area for water utilities that are really used to more urban services, but of course with climate change, some of the other pressures are really having to think, well, you know, what do we really need to do in the future today, but also in 50 years to make sure that we can provide for our customers, but also understand that link, that essential link between urban areas and rural areas. Yeah. So I, I can imagine, I'm interested in how does a, say, a, a major water utility, like, internally in its management structure, how does it, where does prioritizing partnerships and cooperation come in because yeah. it's quite easy for to say in new, you know, new york um water utility to be very focused on there's always going to be some problem they need to fix that's right so so how do they get to the point where saying actually we're going to go and collaborate with these these, yeah. these very different operators well i think you know it's, it's interesting and i mean it's true of course you know you have a broken pipe you want to go to uh, reforest the watershed or do you have to fix the broken pipe and obviously both things are important i think where New York City came to in this dynamic. For one thing, they've always had very high quality water. So, and they've, uh, you know, whether it's true or, or whether it's just a way to, uh, to uh, ingratiate themselves, they call themselves the champagne of drinking water. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a certain pride yeah. in their trademark. And they came to a point where the water quality began to deteriorate due to normal pressures, suburbanization, urbanization, more pressure on the watershed with industrial agriculture. And they said, well, we can either do a, a water treatment solution, kind of your more traditional engineering solution, or we can look upstream and try to identify some of the problem, the pollution points, yeah. and work with those people to correct it. So they began to work right into their operating budget um, a line item. It's it's just the same. It, it comes out of the same budget as it would to repair a leaky pipe. Yeah. Um, to say, well, we really need some upstream partners, and I think that the issue about partnership is so critical because obviously a water utility's main basis of operation is in the urban areas. Its area of expertise is actually quite nil upstream. Yeah. So they need to seek out those kind of upstream market actors, whether they, again, be an association of farmers, an association of hotel businesses that use uh, an exaggerated quantity of water, even extractive industries like mining and petroleum, where they might have to work out arrangements about, well, there are some uses upstream that are incompatible with our downstream water integrity. Yeah. So it's a complicated political process, but yeah. one that they've uh, embraced and one that I encourage other water utilities to embrace yeah. as well. Great. Okay, well, good to meet you. Yes, and let me just do a quick, can you do a quick scan of this? Yeah. So this is a, a, a report based on this exchange between the New York City Water Authority and Latin American water utilities, and I yeah. encourage uh, viewers to take a look at it. Great. Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you Cheers. so much.